2000, we bought an abandoned 100-acre farm in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. We spent years cleaning it up, built a new house, and now are trying to make it a functional homestead farm. Welcome to Red Tool House. Hello everybody, welcome back to Red Tool House. In today's video, I want to do part two of our cold frame build. So if you're wondering what in the world I'm talking about, just check out this link up here. And it is um, part one of our uh, video where we, we're building a cold frame so we can get our seeds started. So again, the concept of cold frame is just simply a box with a, with a lid that's uh, got some glass or something translucent that the sun could come in like a little mini greenhouse, be close to the ground. So uh, last time we built our lid, and here's our lid. I haven't broken it yet, even though some of you commented I probably would. Here we go. So far, so good. We'll see how it goes. In fact, I'm going to put it over here out of the way because I'm going to trip over it if I don't. So it is time to build the box. And uh, as I mentioned in the first video, the size of the cold frame, everything that we're building is based upon the size of the piece of glass that I had. So that gives me roughly some, a little over five feet. I think it's about 65 and a half, 67 and a half is what it came out to roughly. And about uh, two feet deep or two feet wide. Five and a half feet long, two feet wide. So, um, so what I want to do is build this box that has uh, an angle to it, of course. It's the front of the box where the lid would open is going to be lower than the back of the box. And I think I'm going to do roughly um, yeah, two to one. So uh, what I'm doing and what I'm basing all this build off of, of course, we know what the dimensions need to be as far as length and width, and then the depth, I'm basing it off of my material. Now I have a bunch of this tongue and groove pine, all these little cutoffs. My father-in-law um, remodeled hit one of his basement, uh, I think his basement bathroom, and he had a bunch of old tongue and groove in there. Uh, so it's that decorative pine, solid pine. And uh, so he had a bunch of that. He tore it out and, and gave it to me. It's got screw holes in it. It's got outlet holes. It's got all kinds of different things in it. So we'll, we'll just work around that. But my plan is to use this material, of course, since it's tongue and groove, it'll fit together nicely and uh, not have a lot of air gaps. Now you can build it out of anything. If you want to use uh, plywood, plywood would probably be the easiest uh, to, to do because it's sheet material. You can cut it, cut your angles, cut your lines, all that stuff. The thing to consider is just, you know, how is that plywood going to weather? If it's not an out outdoor grade plywood, it'll start to delaminate. Uh, the pine will hold up a little bit better uh, than plywood. Uh, I would definitely stay away from OSB or oriented strand board. That stuff really delaminates when the sun and weather get on it. And not to mention, it's just full of all kinds of nasty glues and things. I wouldn't want that around my seeds that I'm starting. So we're just going to uh, use what we've got. So it's kind of be like the let the material help aid in the design. So uh, one thing I'm going to do for supports, of course, if we're just going to make a box, we've got to have some inside supports to attach everything to. And again, just having what I, using what I have, I have this piece of spalted, wormy red maple. And what do I mean by spalted? Well, spalted just means it's, uh, it's got some uh, coloration in it from, uh, from fungus. It's laid on the, the log is laid on the ground for a while before we milled it. The worms have gotten into it. That's what all those little dimple holes are there. A um, little bit of worm action. Some people love that when they're building furniture. Some people absolutely hate it. Um, and it's red maple, so it's not as sexy as uh, hard maple like you'd have with a sugar maple. And this piece just happens to be the dimension I want to use and exactly the length. So when I cut this into four pieces, it'll give me what I want. So let's get started with our box design. So I've got my material cut to length, and I've got my legs, so these are going to be my front legs. They are nine inches tall, and then I've got my back legs. They are 20 inches tall. So imagine, obviously this is a much scaled down version of that, um, boards on the front, boards on the back, so this is the kind of angle we're going to have here. So when I put this together, then of course I'll have to make up the sides. Now again, this isn't scale at all. It's going to be much, much uh, 
narrower than it is long, so it'd be more something like that if we were trying to come up with some sort of scale. If we start with the front, and then I just have two boards here. These are my two that I've cut. They're 67 and a half inches long. That's the length of my cold frame because of the lid. And I want it to be roughly about 9 to 10 inches. When you put these together, you get about 10 inches, 10 and a half inches. So it's no big deal that my legs are a little bit short of that. There's nothing wrong with having short legs, right? So I'm just going to uh, attach those there on either end. So that's just going to make an make a, um, uh, opportunity to tie them together. And then, of course, when I put the sides on, they'll screw into the sides. So this is just a structural support on the inside of the cold frame. And I'm actually going to screw them on this side just because I like the, the, the other side of the tongue and groove doesn't have the extra uh, you know, little V groove in it. So I'm just going to put that on the inside. Okay, so this is where putting the pieces together and not assembling it all based upon the plan up here or even just something sketched on paper, actually laying it out gives you an idea, allows you to catch your uh, issues before they happen. And some of you may already been grumbling this while you're watching. I'm thinking based upon the dimensions of my lid, that's 67 and a half, 22 and three quarter, then that's how big my box is going to be. 67 and a half long, which is correct, that doesn't change. But the 22 and 3 quarter is an issue simply because of this angle. This is such a sharp angle, this is almost exactly 45, that uh, you, know, you think about something that's laying flat, you get the 22 and 3 quarter when you change it, of course it's, you know, that, that distance becomes longer. So instead of laying this out for this to be 22 and 3 quarter wide, I had to bring it in. So this measurement here would still register 22 and 3 quarter. So uh, this actually makes that dimension 20 inches exactly. So this, these side walls will be no longer than 20 inches and frame up. And then I also had to cut some relief out of my legs here. I just did that with a jigsaw because when the lid's closed, of course, if this was squared off, then you have, uh, you have something that's going to obstruct the lid there. So again, laying this stuff out, since there's no plan, you're just trying to go by it on the fly, then hopefully uh, this you know, will keep me from running into other issues. <laughs> no guarantee though. <clears throat> well, she's coming together pretty good. I've got the 20 inch sides on it and I'm just doing the first, the first row of sides here so I can just double check everything and make sure that's, that's what I want. So these are indeed 20. That angle, 22 and 3 quarter exactly. Um, so now I can finish laying up these sides. Now I'll have to put another little support on the inside of this since my uh, boards as they come up of course, won't reach all the way over here to tie into this support, so I'll just uh, connect those together. Obviously, I could glue them together. This isn't load-bearing by any means, so it doesn't really have to be that rigid. Okay, so now to do this triangle, I've got my two side pieces on, so I'm level with the front, and now I want to do that triangle cut. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to take two pieces of wood, two pieces of the same trim, and I've already cut one to uh, 20 inches, and then this is my cutoff here in my hand. So imagine it's going to be laid out like this, Do it the right way, it's going to be laid out like this. And of course I just want a 45 degree line, nice perfect straight cut all the way up through here. And uh, um, I'm going to, as I put these together, like I said, I'll put a small nailer board here, kind of at a cross to, to tie this together, or I can even glue the tongue and groove. So just. Just the board 20 inches and the cutoff that I had is enough to, to be a sacrificial piece to cut away what we, what we uh, don't want. So when I put this together to dry fit it, I see that I want a 45 from here to here. So I could just mark that with my pencil. And it's okay to be a little proud because that's where I want, I really want the frame of the top, uh, the lid, to, to rest on this. So I want this to be a nice, clean, straight line that's supportive for the frame whereas this and this aren't going to be as supportive. 
So I'm just going to make a mark here and go back to my table and draw our line. So take a straight edge, lay it across here, mark my line. So there I know where that cut's need, cut needs to be. So I can, so I mentioned that I could even take a sacrificial piece of wood and uh, screw that down there. See, not something that big, but something to tie these together. But when I put the screws down through this side, that's going to hold it to that part of the wall. And the fact that it's tongue and groove will hold it to the other. But I probably will still put a sacrificial piece in there to hold it together. Okay, so I've got my uh, angle cut here. And again, I just took a little piece of scab wood and screwed it together there so we'd have, a, have some stability. So when I go to put this together and see how, uh, how it worked out, then we'll, uh, we'll know. There we go. So like that. So this lid, or this edge here, is proud. It's the, it's the highest edge all the way across. So it actually came in real flush with uh, the top of this uh, angle of this board here. So that's where the lid will lay. And pretty solid. Once I put some screws in here to dog it down, that's not going to go anywhere. The tongue's holding it in to place here, so the tongue and groove obviously is a benefit. You don't have to build out a tongue and groove, but it's a benefit. Um, so we'll put it together and do the other side. Okay, so uh, we got our sides on, and we're ready to test fit the lid here. So I will grab the lid. Got my assistant with me on camera, so this will help out. So when I place that lid on there, just as a dry fit. Roughly line it up there. So that, that fits, that's uh, where we want it to be. And again, you can see that angle, that, uh, that 45 degree angle is definitely gonna let a lot of sun in. So uh, I'm not gonna leave that there because that's not gonna stay without hinging. Okay, so I got the hinges in and just using old door hinges. These are old rusty hinges. Actually, um, if, if you go back and actually look at uh, video series I did top 10 things to hoard on your homestead one of the things was hinges and You can never have too many hinges. So I've got these old door hinges on it obviously rust up a little bit I'll have to keep some grease or WD-40 on it, but it gives me uh, what I want there So I've got the ability to raise and lower that lid So we turned it around here so we could see it obviously the, uh, the way everything's going to work there now the uh, I'll watch over time lifting this up and back if I need more supports or cross bracing on this door then I'll know, but obviously the game plan will be to lift it here. In fact, I may, may put a handle here so it forces whomever comes to open it to not grab it by the corner and lift it, but, but, but grab it by the middle and open it. So the last thing I need is a prop. Um, from what I understand with cold frames is, obviously the way this thing is now, I've got some you know, holes from this scrap wood, holes I have to fill in or whatever we'll look at and see what kind of venting we need. but. This could get too hot if it just stays sealed all the time. So there's times that you'd want to come in and actually you know, prop it up a little bit. Maybe you prop it up that much. Maybe you prop it up more. So there's multiple things I can do to make a prop, but we'll, uh, we'll check that out once we get it in place and get an idea of temperatures we're running into. Okay, so I have my cold frame in place up here at the house in our landscaping. This is the front of the garage here. So this is a real test to see if this is the ideal place to have it. This is south facing. South is just a little bit off the direct plane of our house. It's just that way a cat, it's cat's whisker. And right now, the way the sun is, it is about, um, it's almost four o'clock in the afternoon. So the sun's about right here. So you can see I'm getting a little bit of a shade starting because of the, uh, the uh, what's causing that shade? That's the corner of the house. So the corner of the house is causing a little bit of shade there. But already this thing is, is heating up quite nicely. So um, I can come in and pack some dirt around it, do some more things. They've even got a uh, prop here. Um, the game plan with the prop, of course, is to, uh, to prop it open and allow, uh, if it gets too hot, allow it to cool off. Now, I probably need to shorten that prop stick a little bit because there's be times you only want to prop it up just, uh, just a little bit. You know, maybe even just, uh, just leave the stick laying there so it's got uh, just enough of a gap to let that out. So um, let the heat out of there. 
So of course we don't want it to get too hot and burn up our plants. But the reason why I put it here against the house is, A, it's, it's close by that we can, we can attend to it if need be, because there may be nights where we need to come take the plants out. We're not planting directly into the ground. We're gonna put in trays. So we may need to come get our trays because it may just be getting too cold at night to need to bring them in. But on nights that it gets cooler, this brick radiates some crazy heat. If it's had a sunny day, then it really gets some thermal mass going there and gets some heat generated. So this brick will continue to put off heat and maybe keep this area a little warmer as it gets cold after the sun goes down. So we're gonna keep an eye on it and see what it does. So one thing I've also done is here in the garage, I've mounted a indoor-outdoor thermometer. So this thermometer here, you know, disregard the time, I'm not messing with the time, but you can see the indoor-outdoor temperature. The indoor, of course, is here in the garage, but I've got the garage door open, so all this air is coming through. And then the probe, this wire here, is just going out the window and into the uh, cold frame. So I can get an idea of just uh, what the temperature is and uh, we can check on it on a regular basis. You know, we'll check on it in the middle of the day, peak day, and we'll check on it in the evenings as sun's setting to see what kind of uh, temperatures we're maintaining. That gives us an idea how to monitor, and I can just stick my head out the door of the garage here and, and be able to keep an eye on it. But you can see the temperature is rising already. Just It's only been in there for about uh, two minutes, and I've had the lid closed for about that long, so it was equal. The inside and out were equal, of course, since we're just standing out here in the air, but uh, it's already... Uh, gone up uh, quite a bit. Looks like it's going up to, uh, yeah, seven plus degrees. Well, we'll do updates on how this is working out. We'll uh, do some videos of what we get started in the cold frame, get updates of how the temperature's been going, how we've been regulating, how we need to open and close it, all of that. So we'll look for updates there. But we hope you all enjoyed this build project. Again, I appreciate all the good comments of people saying they do like uh, some more wood shop type work. So I'll do it and I'll try to keep it from being too long. Uh, but we'll, we'll get into some other projects that we detail that are homestead related. So appreciate it. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video. Check us out Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 4 p.m. That's when we upload new videos. And check us out on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Red Tool House Farm. Take care, everybody.